I decided to uh, ride out to where the bus station is and because um, I was really interested in uh, the flowers along the road uh, and I also thought I saw thistle or um, I think nettle I think I saw it the other day while Staff and I were um, like going to the supermarket and whatnot but anyways um, so I hopped on my bike and proceeded to go onto the road and uh, I saw I saw the beautiful flowers and I was like yes I think this is the thistle let me just get off my bike I actually put the bike away from the roadside so if there were cars coming through it would not it would not obstruct blah blah, blah right so I proceed to just you know just take pictures of the flowers that I'm interested in because I'm really interested in uh, you know medicinal herbs and medicinal plants and all that so I this some I really want to dive into it and where best to do it than here in the, like in the countryside so I'm doing my thing so several cars pass by no problem and then one car um, it was just like, I think it was like this small black Peugeot. I don't know. I don't know what make of the, of the car it was, but I remember the guy that was in the car. And instead of stopping, looking and saying hello or not saying hello or just moving along as the other cars did, the guy stopped. So I thought maybe I knew him, right? So I stopped what I was doing and I looked like in the car and I'm like okay maybe I know this person no he's just sitting in the car giving me this look like B-I-T-C-H what are you doing here and it's not like I was obstructing the road it wasn't like he just sat there for a good I would say 10 to 15 seconds just staring at me giving me this all out Nazi look like you don't belong here like and for those of you out there who think that, oh, we're being overly sensitive or maybe that's not what he was thinking, you give me one excuse why a person would sit in this car in the middle of the road, staring me down like, uh, get out of here. So I'm look so I kept looking at him too until he left. I was not going to let him mess up my day, which clearly kind of psychologically he did because I'm still angry about this and uh, and this is just to say that these nasty people live everywhere in every nook and cranny of the world okay this place there's not like I know a lot of people out here in Utanoa um, and I can't really speak for how the people are here but I could tell you I'm the only person of color here I know Fia has a Spanish stepson or son. I don't know where he's from. He could be Chinese. I'm not sure. I don't remember. So I'm just saying that. Um, obviously, that I know for a fact that I'm the only person of color in here in this little village of Utano. All right. So sometimes when I walk, some people give me these like really nasty looks. I just go about my day. Sometimes I meet people who are quite friendly, you know, they're like, hey, you, uh, you know, you more do. I'm like, oh, Brad and help, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I keep it moving, all right? I don't really engage in conversations and all that stuff, like things of that sort. But today was really something, okay? And nobody out there can tell me, oh, it was in my mind. Oh, maybe it was something else. Enough with the excuses, okay? This guy clearly sat there. He didn't move the car, he just stared me down like, so I'm looking at him like, why are you staring me down? Like, what's the problem? I'm not in the way. I'm, a, I'm way, like, away from the roadside. Like, what are you, so what are you, what are you doing? Policing me? I wasn't going to be intimidated. So I stood my ground and I kept looking at him. And then, before he left, he just rolled his eyes and he just kept, kept it moving. So you tell me, no, you tell me. So that was in my head. I'm sure a lot of you will say that. You know, this is the kind of nastiness and I mean, who can, this is like overt intimidation. 
I'm not going to use the word racist or what have you. Who knows? But who does that, though? Who does that if you didn't have malintent in mind? All right? And this is the kind of thing that white folks, you guys, do not go through on a continual basis. To be black means to be stressed 24-7 because you don't know who you're going to encounter and what kind of experience you're going to have. It really is that simple. I started out my morning very, very happy. I was having a really good day, all right? And then this happened. You know, it's very easy for one to say, oh, stop thinking about it, leave it alone, you know, he's an idiot, blah, blah, blah. But no, this is the kind of thing that really, 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 really upsets black folks. Sometimes, and I, you know, we had a neighbor last night and he was asking about like racism and he was asking about things of that sort. And he was asking me and I, you know, he really wanted to know what it was like to be black. He really wanted to know why the United States has so much racism. And I said to him, please don't get it twisted. I know Swedes tout themselves to be very open-minded and liberal and whatnot, but people are people are people are people are people. You find good and bad people everywhere, in every race, every culture, every creed, everything. However, to say that Swedes in general are not racist, I don't even know about that. You can't say that if you are a person who is not black. What would you understand about racism? Okay? And you wouldn't understand it. So, you know, it's, it's funny how all of this stuff is going on right now. And like, Juneteenth is Juneteenth weekend. And obviously, every black person who is woke and who is like feeling the stress of worldwide racism and bigotry and hatred, we're extra sensitive right now. But also, parallel to our extra sensitivity, you have people who, who push back, those who really don't like us, right? They're pushing back all the way through. And so it's not just in the United States, it's here too in Sweden. So I don't, I really don't like people saying that, oh, you know, racism doesn't really exist here in Sweden, especially if you're white, you cannot say that. You can't say it, okay? You don't know what it's like to live in this black shell. Like, the, the psychological trauma that we experience on a daily basis, whether it is overt or um, subliminal or just sometimes it's just a look that you get you already know like today the guy just he stayed in his car and he stared me down until I think that he wanted me I, I don't know I can't speak for him but I'll be damned if I was going to move all right I live here too I'm a resident of this place too so if you want me out you're gonna have to do more than just stare me down he picked the wrong person today all right he definitely did I am not that mouse sheep log on type of woman I will stand you down because that's how I am this is not what I had expected today but it's an experience that I really wanted to tell people about because it's like what the hell you know and so you guys have no idea what it's like to be other to be amongst like when you walk it like black folks who walk into a sea of white people like, there's a discomfort there that you guys have no idea how we feel. It has nothing to do with confidence. It has nothing to do with somebody having, you know, high self-esteem or low self-esteem. It has everything to do about the vibe and the atmosphere and the vibe that people give off when they know they don't want you there, when they know that you don't belong there, in their eyes, when they feel like, okay, we have a, we have a, a, a black spot in our midst, right? That has happened to me, all right? And last night I was explaining to my neighbor about going to a one of my husband's friend's parties and walking into a situation just like that and I felt completely un uncomfortable. And all I got back when I really expressed my concern was excuses. Oh no, it's in your head, it's not really like that, you know what, maybe it's you. And they turned it on me, all right? So I realize right now there's certain conversations that I will not have with certain people because 
they choose to go the excuse route instead of facing it head on. You understand what I'm saying? So, I, <laughs> I'm so happy that I have this um, to come to when I'm feeling a certain type of way. And, um, yeah, it's just, you know, and every single black person out there has felt this at some point in their lives. So let's not make it the excuses. Let's not make the excuses that, oh, this doesn't happen or it's not in our mind. So don't let them, don't let them tell you that it's in your mind or you're overly sensitive. Don't fall into that. Vibes don't lie. Vibes don't lie, guys. It is a fact it doesn't lie. So please, 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 please. Those of you, my white friends out there, again, before you make an excuse as to saying, oh, the person's old, the person's like an idiot, or the person is out of their mind, or, you know, oh, they're just, it's just a one-off thing. Before you say that, before you say that, think twice, okay? Because how can you be the judge of what we go through and what we feel on a daily basis all right the worst part it's not the trumps out there because those people they show you straight out who they are and what they are and how they feel the worst cut types of people are the ones who smile in your face hey hey humoju akbra blah 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 and behind their back they're like i would never never invite this person to my house no 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 oh absolutely not why because of their feelings about black folks all right so you know i can go on and on and on about this but no i'm just gonna go and soak in the sun i'm just gonna try to enjoy myself today because i belong here i deserve to be here and nobody and i mean nobody in this world is gonna take this away from me and ruin my entire day all right so so that guy that was in the car he lives here in the village and he will be seeing me bicycling all over the place right i will remember his face when i see it i'm sure i'll run into him somehow on the roadside or what have you let him try to do that thing again to me all right let him try again all right because i'm ready all right i'm ready this is just enough that what we go through and they don't stop that's the worst thing they put they don't stop they with all of this hatred and all this stuff going on in the world and you have people like rising up against you know all of this like hatred and bigotry you have those like that who are just like f that i don't like you people i don't want you here and so i will do everything that i can to get your asses out of here right and this is what we deal with guys for those white people who think you know you don't know jack you don't know what it's like to deal with this every day and you have to go home with that that trauma you have to go home with that stress even talking about it is stress all right you know you have like constant temporary traumas over and over again that become permanent it becomes permanent don't you guys understand that all right so What I'm saying is this, it's okay if you have inherent biases and you are a bigot and you want to express that amongst your people, amongst your group, go ahead, right? But leave us the F alone, yo. Like, leave us alone. You don't like to see our face, you move over. You walk by. But the minute you try to, like, bring your aggression on to us and you don't want us to speak up, you don't want us to fight back, you don't want us to respond to you what is it no i don't think so i don't think so so to that guy here who, li who lives in the village of utano shame on you but you picked the wrong woman i'm not that one okay because i'm the one who will call you out if i knew your name i'd call you out by name all right i deserve to be here too okay and i will do what i want to do anytime i want to do it without infringing on anybody's rights and anybody's property i will be me because i live here too i pay taxes too and i will enjoy this beautiful place like you do 
You know? Peace out.